Good evening. Um, uh, my name is Roger and I'm the founder of Reconnect. And today we're in Dubai launching the Heartfulness Initiative. So I will tell you a bit about it, but I would like to first and foremost uh, thank the Global Mental Health Peer Network, who's represented today by its founder, Charlene, and by Claudia. And we actually also have uh, Manvi from India, who is a member of the Global Mental Health Peer Network, and we also have Anto. So thank you for hosting the session for us. Uh, we are here in Dubai, actually, we're gathering. So you can only see me, but we're a bunch of people here uh, who've, who've gathered to, uh, well, we we're, not, like, we're not finishing once this session finishes. So we're continuing for another three hours. We're doing some amazing stuff. Um, but I'm going to just quickly go through um, our guest panel and then I will start. So we have uh, Claudia Sartor from Global Mental Health Peer Network. We have Gabriella Yeager from Global Changemakers based in Switzerland. We have Dr. Jeremy Alford, uh, PhD in clinical psychology. Well, he keeps traveling, so I don't know where he is now. We have Richard, filmmaker, photographer and musician from Canada and he's from Lebanese origins. We have Manvi uh, from India, and she's a member of the Global Mental Health Peer Network, one of the young and most active. Uh, we have Mesa Khalil, who's my personal coach, and she's a certified ACC, CPCC certified coach who's joining us. We have Lina Hariri. She is based in Germany, and she is a human resources solutions expert. And we have Ritu Shaturvedi, who's an art therapist and color healer, um, who, up, who works actually at uh, Rashid Medical Center in Dubai, which is a government-owned medical center, doing art therapy as part of mental health support or physical health support. And myself, who I'm hosting you today, so my name is Roger, I'm the founder of, Global Ment uh, of <laughs> Reconnect, and a member of the Global Mental Health uh, Peer Network. I'm also a um, coordinator for the uh, Human Rights um, Committee. So I'm happy to have all of you here. Now, for those who uh, don't know me, two years ago, I was, um, my kidneys were collapsing. I was lost all my money, was on the road. Um, I've been to two psychiatric hospitals. I've been subjected to multiple human rights violations, diagnosed with bipolar disorder three times wrongfully. And then until I discovered from the film of Richard, who's with us today, a film called Disconnection. Uh, I watched his film, which we're gonna screen later here today. And when I watched it, I knew that the search has begun. And that search has led us to today. Um, I started Reconnect uh, almost a year ago on March 21st last year, which is Happiness Day. And then uh, we're here today, almost 11 months later, celebrating Valentine's Day. So in the process, and this is, uh, I told um, Claudia that I have a surprise for her. Now in the process of this whole story that I told you in a very short manner, I lost rights to my daughter due to mental illness. And uh, I found out eight months ago that I had to get permission from a court in order to even spend time with my daughter. And since then, uh, I think I've done more than what is deemed acceptable uh, publicly and legally and whatever to get rights to my daughter. And today, three hours ago, I received the verdict of the court restoring my full right to, uh, rights to my daughter on equal custody basis. Yay, Roger. Very so, nice. I want to especially thank Global Mental Health Peer Network and especially Claudia in particular because she's heard me cry, she's heard me uh, angry, um, and she's always been there. And so are many of the people. Mesa, Coach Mesa, who's here, she's the first person who believed in Reconnect and supported until today. So I'm so thankful for everyone. I think we're um, launching something very powerful today. I'm going to start it um, before I move to Global Mental Health Peer Network. I'd like to, I wrote something for the occasion that I want to read. So if you allow me, um, it's called, I am angry, not hangry, angry. So 
Martin Luther King was not the first nor the only victim of racism and slavery, but he was the only one who had a dream. And his famous speech, I had a dream, remains a classic speech of freedom and human rights. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed, ruler of Dubai, was not the first tribal Bedouin under the scorching sun, victim of its summer heat and thirst, but he was the only one who saw that Mars is cooler than the sun, and the UAE leadership landed a rocket in the, in the Mars orbit for scientific research under the title of Impossible is Possible. So what seemed impossible 50 years ago, when the UAE was a tribal desert, has shown us that the impossible is possible with vision. This place has transformed literally from a desert to what it is now in 50 years. So I'm not the first human being who falls through the cracks of society due to mental illness and stigma, but most importantly, due to failed health systems, flawed legal systems, and inhumane religious patriarchies who claim to be pro-life. But since I am the only one accused of being angry about it and who have no issue whatsoever in expressing my anger, I'm going to speak my heart out and say, I am angry. I am angry because I know that mental illnesses have doubled in the last two decades because of poor food choices and lack of movement. That's why the Heartfulness Initiative integrates doshas, nutrition, health coaching, gut health awareness, and movement at the heart of its program. To reverse mental illnesses by minus 50%, we need more nutritionists, less psychiatrists. I am angry because I know that vitamin D deficiency is the number one source of depression globally, and humans are given antidepressants instead of a holiday at the beach where they can bathe under God's sun for free organic vitamin D. The Heartfulness Initiative is at the beach and at the pool and at the park and online, and our heart is green and sustainable, just like the heart chakra. And we just launched our website today um, for those of you who would like to do their self-assessment on the seven dimensions of wellness. It is reconnectheartfulness.com. We launched it actually two days ago, but today we got the questionnaire um, for people to do their own self-assessment. I am angry because I know, uh, because children who have been abused by the ones who were meant to love them the most are now adults with borderline disorder when all they need is to relearn how to trust and love. Carl Jung healed a woman with schizophrenia living on the moon. She created her world on the moon because she lost trust in human beings due to parental hate and abuse. Carl Jung healed her because he knew that the only way for her to come back is through a human connection. The Heartfulness Initiative involves three local and international peer support programs where all there all that there is is human connection. I am angry because I was much diagnosed three times with a mental illness when I never had one in the first place. And so many are diagnosed with mental illnesses when they never had one in the first place because of the lack of empathy. Whether you are diagnosed, misdiagnosed, or want to be diagnosed or re-diagnosed, the Heartfulness Initiative in collaboration with all of you will guide you through the whole process, including the elimination of physical reasons adequate counseling time, and a science-based holistic approach to healing. Our online and offline mental health partners provide mental health support and awareness to whoever needs them 24 hours a day, because when it comes to saving lives, it doesn't matter who does it first or best as long as we do it. And when it comes to suicide, access to humanity does save lives. I am angry because I know that 66% of mental illnesses are healed within three to five years. And I am angrier because we are told mental illnesses are hereditary and lifelong sentences of stigma and medication, and even worse, self-stigma, which is the most dangerous of all stigmas. The Heartfulness Initiative is a science-based holistic program of healing and transformation that is geared towards healing, full recovery, and transcendence into the best version of yourself, and unapolog unapologetically so and most likely within 12 to 24 months. And for that end, we present solutions such as global change makers from Switzerland for youth entrepreneurship and design thinking. We have with us Saga Performance from Sweden uh, for an analytics-based approach to be Superman or Superwoman. And we have integrated a human resources partner, which is called Ask HR, represented by Lina Hariri, to support participating individuals with their career needs based on purpose finding and doing only what they love. So we have Dr. Jeremy with us. 
I am angry because people are told it's okay to not be okay, that it's okay to be suffering, that it's okay to numb the pain with medication instead of face the pain through human connection, coaching, healing, and motivation. The Heartfulness Initiative presents a holistic science-based approach to healing that says it's not okay not to be okay, and that if you are suffering, we will suffer with you until you laugh your heart out with us. And that if you are on medication, then you don't need to deal with stigma, the labeling and the humiliation, because all you'll need to do is make the choice to make new friends with people with lived experience. We eliminate stigma only by walking away from it and giving it the middle finger. Um, we are collaborating with Soul Hope here in Dubai uh, and globally with the Global Mental Health Peer Network to give voice and love to those who suffer from mental illness and learning opportunities for mental health advocates of the future, voicing out the lived experience, narrative for the betterment of our societies, to make our mental health more humane and even profitable in its humanity, because mental health systems can be human-centric and profitable at the same time. And there are best practices to prove that. Check out the state of California and check out Dubai and the UAE very soon. And don't go too far, look what's happening here. I think we have one of the best gatherings in the world for people who can create the change. I am angry because in many places around the world, people are afraid of their health systems and their doctors because of the absence of patient protection laws that ensure that every doctor is accountable for the mission and the oath that he or she swore. The Heartfulness Initiative is launching from the UAE whose mission is to make this country the happiest, most tolerant, and healthiest place in the world within 10 years. And we know the UAE will manifest it because the UAE stands for mental strength. We've seen them do so many things. There's Vision 2040, it's all about sustainable transformation. And most importantly, why we are here and support it is the UAE National Strategy for Wellbeing 2031 which will manifest into one of the best healthcare systems in the world and a global wellness destination that the world will fly into for being the best version of themselves. We are not only supported by a country, we are supported by organizations and brands. Link Viva is an event agency here who's done wonders for us. It's one of the best agencies we truly have seen. Redison Red in Dubai Silicon Oasis, they, were, they will be supporting the Heartfulness Initiative in three programs geared towards youth, and student enablement. Um, Voss Water um, have supported us from day one. Voss Water from Norway, literally the first time we went to them, they supported us, they enabled us to be here today. And uh, today we are at Goy Gourmet here in the Ripe Market in Dubai, and we've been also doing a lot of initiatives here, and the Heartfulness Initiative is also going to be present in its physical form. So actually we will be present in a physical form, not as medical centers, but as uh, programs, uh, spaces to promote the seven dimensions of wellness as a form of healing and to offer enablement programs for individuals and for programs. Um, and today I can tell you that anger has been the catalyst for reconnect and the heartfulness initiative. Now imagine what every human can do if they change what made them angry into the solutions of the future, that's called social entrepreneurship, design thinking, and human performance. And we are presenting some of the best local and global solutions with this project. So I'll conclude. Why so angry? Forget the past, we are told. We are told to forget the violence in our homes. We are told to forget the wars we live. We are told to forget our traumas and told they are dramas. Why so angry, forget the past? If I had forgotten the past, I wouldn't be right here in front of you alive or shedding my anger and co-creating uh, a science-based holistic program of human healing and transformation based on three basic values, empathy, human connection, and love. Two years ago, I was dying from a mental illness and I healed with empathy, human connection, and love. Happy Valentine's Day. Beautiful, Roger. Thank you. Claudia, I'm going to move to you. So Claudia has been an amazing support, amazing friend, and she will be presenting the Global Mental Health Peer Network. Yeah. Well, it's going to be very difficult for me to follow 
after Roger now, because I think he said so many good things. Um, but yeah, I'll do a quick intro. So I'm Deputy CEO at the Global Mental Health Peer Network. Um, so for us, it's so, it really is so nice to see Roger and other members, you know, do such wonderful work. So from our side, Roger, we're really proud of you. And I, I know that you went through a very difficult time, um, but I'm so glad that today you were able to share that actually through all that heartache, we got somewhere. So things do happen. Like you said, things are not always impossible. So we're really glad that we're here for you, with you and looking forward to our journey together. So we partnered up with Reconnect um, now. So going forward, there's going to be incredible activities and I'm sure we're going to have an incredible journey to change um, or reduce the stigma and kind of try to improve the human rights aspects of mental health. Um, with that said, um, I think maybe before I tell you a little bit of what we're going to do, I just want to maybe bring Charlene in, if that's okay. Um, and Charlene, do you maybe just why why did you start the peer network? I think it's something very similar to maybe why Roger started Reconnect. You know, if, if we could share a little bit about that. Thanks, Claudia. Yes, I, I can almost, as Roger was telling his, his story going through his journey, I could almost relate of when I was diagnosed and also, you know, abuse and like a neglected mental health system that I went through, struggling to find something that I needed. Not the medical model. I remember back then, only thing is medication, hospitalization, nothing else, nothing that I really needed to get where I want to be, to thrive. I didn't want to just survive. And I think that makes a nice alignment, uh, reconnect and this initiative of, I like how Roger put it, the best, being the best of who you are, being the best of yourself. And I think that is what we need to strive to. And I think, I think together we can really correct so many of the wrongs in the world if we stand together and connect. And I just want to say, Roger, thank you so much for including the peer network. Um, I think two strong organizations with strong visions for the future. We can achieve so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, um, and well, we are actually being hosted by the Global Mental Health Peer Network, who, who, who are so supportive for every single member. It's amazing what a structure it's growing. It's now 120 members from all around the world everyone with lived experience in mental health. So uh, it's the narrative of those who experience and it's time to be heard. And now we're 120, all doing amazing work in different parts of the world. So thank you uh, to um, Global Mental Health Peer Network and Reconnect is actually uh, donating 5% uh, of its annual revenues to support uh, mental health change programs wherever they are, and we, we will get to that later, but this is what we want to do, is we want to support and funding um, wherever we can, because there are lots of places around the world that don't have any access to proper mental care. I would like to invite Gabriela, Gabriela from Global Change Makers. Now, I'm fascinated by the Global Change Makers, uh, because if we taught every child or teenager about design thinking, social entrepreneurship, and project management in five weeks for a course of $50, that means we will change the world in 10 days or five weeks. So if we get literally a thousand of these young people to take the Global Change Makers program, the whole world can change. So I'm happy to have Gabriella. We have a, we have a helicopter passing here. So Gabriella, hi. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for, for having me here, Roger. And uh, yes, as you said, the, the mission that we have is to support youth to create positive change towards uh, inclusive, fair and sustainable communities. Um, we actually have more than a thousand uh, young people worldwide, every corner of the world, uh, working on all sorts of issues, whether it's uh, women's rights, the environment, uh, inclusion, mental health, you name it. And uh, our motto and our way of doing this is we have a very large community of young people that are community activists, 
social entrepreneurs uh, who are basically creating their own projects and their own initiatives to improve the communities that they live in and are teaching other young people how they did so. So um, we now have a, an online school where the teachers are young people themselves who are sharing their experience of what it is to be a young person and trying to change the world. Uh, and we do it in a very structured way uh, through courses, uh, online courses. We also do webinars, we have a podcast, uh, we have a YouTube channel where basically we share all the knowledge that, that needs to be shared in order to, to create a positive change. A little bit of numbers, um, we have uh, change makers in more than 180 countries, so virtually everywhere in the world. We have supported more than 420 youth initiatives uh, within around uh, for 13 years, so uh, kind of like uh, building up in, 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 in the community and, and growing the community and growing the resources that these communities is, uh, is able to share. Uh, so far from all these projects that we have helped support it in the past, we've had an impact of more than 15 million people impacted worldwide through the, the different projects that we have. So uh, there's a, a lot uh, to be said, uh, but I think I don't want to steal too much of your time. Please do check out, I'm going to put in the, in the chat, um, our website uh, and our resources. There's there are courses on virtually everything, toolkits on virtually everything from design thinking, project management, and really uh, the, the, the spectator can get in touch and, and, and involved so much as they want to. The idea is that we provide examples uh, to show young people that it is possible regardless whatever your, your situation or your background um, is to do something good for the world. And we encourage them to do so and provide a, a support network uh, of young people that are doing the same. So um, thank you very much. Again, I'm going to put the, the details um, of our website here. And uh, I hope that you know this is helpful for, for young people worldwide and, and everyone who's watching this. Thanks. Thank you, Gabriela. Okay, so up next is Richard Del Asmar. Now, Richard, we met, I think, about 17 years ago on Facebook, and we've been friends, digital friends, for 15 years. We've never met. Yes. And his film, Disconnection, uh, is the film that uh, we were literally having one of our Facebook conversations, and we speak once every five, six years, and I don't know how we got... I kind of let it out and I'm like, I'm going through this. I'm diagnosed with a mental illness. And he said, oh, I've done this video about mental health. I'll send you the link. And he sends me the link and I watched it. And literally that was the day that got me here today. Today, I told you I got rights to my daughter. If I didn't know about Richard's film, if I didn't watch it, I'd probably still be in the same state that I was in, which was really, really terrible. So I'm so thankful to Richard for being a brother, a friend, uh, an inspiration and a healer for me. So thank you, Richard. We are going to be actually uh, his film, of course, because it's not the you know, medical narrative we know. It's actually not being supported with the film, cinema, et cetera. And I think it's because literally because the message is very strong and it contradicts with the kind of science that we know and it's featuring Dr. Peter Bregan who's actually one of the biggest authors in the anti-medication movement and he's a psychiatrist. I'm gonna let Richard talk about it but before he does I want to say that Richard has been so kind to allow us to collaborate to use this film not only for awareness if it saved me I'm sure it can save millions of people just from the awareness of it. But second, because we actually uh, want to find solutions for children in Lebanon. And that doesn't only include Lebanese children, but we have a refugee crisis. Global change makers will transform refugee camps into productivity camps. And you know, these people don't have hope. They, they cannot work in the legal system, in the labor force. So they have to survive on global change makers programs and um, our guidance and support and whatever we can provide. So Richard, we are also collaborating 
between Richard and Reconnect to actually launch this video for the purpose of fundraising. And I've also raised this to Global Mental Health Peer Network for their consideration. So please let's have a look at it because it's a beautiful film that has been put in the drawers and it's so amazing. So Richard, please go ahead. Thank you so much, Charles, for this wonderful intro introduction. Um, I'd like to start by thanking the Lord Jesus Christ for giving me the gift of filmmaking so I can share with the world about the relationship between him and what's healthy for people who have mental health issues, which is every human being, but to different degrees. I'd like to thank you eventually and the team of Reconnect for this wonderful collaboration, obviously. I will start by talking about the spiritual reality and then move to mental health issues. As the Holy Bible informs us, God is spirit, and therefore the spiritual world that we cannot see with our naked eyes or even do not make sense to our human logic is the essence of our existence. God is love and we are the consequence of that love. But how can we visualize the true meaning of love? The Holy Bible informs us that the wage of sin is death and we all have sinned. Now, since God never lets go of his justice, Jesus Christ, or God in the flesh, or the only sinless and innocent one, or even the truth of love incarnate, pays for the just wage of sin by dying on our behalf on the cross out of grace. So whoever trusts in him as Lord and Savior and eventually repent of their sins could get a relationship with God and eternal life in heaven after passing from this world to the next one. So love simply means grace and justice all together, or Jesus Christ on the cross. So why does love heal and keep a society safer than psychiatric drugs do, especially in the long run? The original sin in the Garden of Eden led to our separation from the source of love, since God is love. The temptation and lies of Satan was to simply make us believe that we can become gods by disobeying God. From that disobedience and revolution against God, that they called the original sin, our ego was born and all other sins and mental health issues followed. After the separation from God and or love, we also became in a lack of love. And after that, violence started to arise on earth, as we can see in the Old Testament, which means the more love, the less violence in our societies and vice versa. In practical terms, unless in cases of a satanic possession, a lack of love creates emotional pain, and in its turn, the brain tries to protect us from this emotional pain, hence the rise of mental health symptoms. For example, someone gets bullied or humiliated to the extent of the emotional pain being too much to be handled by that person. Needless to say, bullying and humiliation have no love in them, and therefore no grace nor justice. To survive this emotional pain, the brain may make that person believe that they are the king of the universe, for example, because as long as they are in this powerful position and glorious position, they are not experiencing the emotional pain and can survive it at least for a while. Therefore, what psychiatrists would call a delusion and an illness in this case is simply a survival protective mechanism from that emotional pain. It's close to the brain telling us to eat a lot to protect us from possible hunger while we might end up with diabetes. When you treat someone with love to compensate from a lack of love that came from bullying, for example, you step by step start to heal that emotional pain and therefore over time, the brain doesn't need this protective mechanism or delusion anymore. Of course, from love comes trust, empathy, forgiveness, kindness, patience, generosity, awareness, etc., and definitely grace and justice. Unfortunately, today psychiatry perceives those symptoms as an unproven illness and try to eliminate them with psychiatric drugs. When those protective mechanisms or symptoms are eliminated with psychiatric drugs, the patient, especially if their symptoms are extreme, is left with this emotional pain, which is a major reason for suicide and violence. And we're not talking yet about the psychiatric, the physical torture of psychiatric drugs, especially if given in high doses. We're also not talking about the fact that forced treatments equals rape. And regardless of the intention of the psychiatrist, I don't know much of people who can get better after being raped unless God grants them the power to forgive their abusers. It is true that patients could have a lack of insight into their mental health issues, indeed. But unfortunately, so does today's psychiatry as long as they are insisting on the concept of illnesses that cannot be proven by a logic. And if research is a proof by itself, why are they still doing research since decades? 
let's not also forget that Big Pharma is making billions of dollars out of those unproven illnesses. However, and make, make, make no mistakes about it, in the long run, the triumph as usual will be for God or love, our creator. So my advice to you for a healthy life and commu community is this, trusting God or love above anyone else, even your own selves, and once you receive God in your hearts through the Holy Spirit, pass that love to your fellow human beings. Thank you so much and God bless. We're clapping for you in Dubai. <laughs> okay, uh, is Dr. Jeremy here? I, I saw him like drop in earlier. So Dr. Jeremy is fantastic. We've, all, we've also met digitally so far. And he was based in Lebanon. He worked for many years as a clinical psychologist in many places. But, uh, you know, Dr. Jeremy is probably the first psychologist or any mental health I ever spoke to. And I literally was asking him for help legally with my daughter, with diagnosis, with etc. And then that translated into so many other things. But the beautiful thing about Dr. Jeremy um, is for me, he represents the three core components of what we believe healing is, which is love, empathy, and human connection. He organizes his retreats. He's doing amazing innovation in terms of healing, uh, amazing programs in Bali and different places. So I'd like uh, to invite Dr. Jeremy to tell us a bit about himself. And uh, yeah, thank you, Dr. Jeremy, for all your support. I really appreciate all that you've done for me. Thank you. You're very welcome, uh, Roger, and thank you for inviting me on this uh, this occasion. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi, and nice nice to meet uh, everybody here, and uh, very nice to listen to uh, all that you have to say. And uh, I believe yes, it's like um, you know, the, with the World Wide Web, we're we're all more closely connected, uh, so it's more of an opportunity to to be heard. Uh, collectively with uh, like-minded uh, people and I guess in um, especially in this in this um, uh, domain that uh, concerns us all you know our wellness our, our well-being you know and and uh, I, I believe that um, what you stand for uh, what you are uh, voicing about uh, love empathy and human connection really is uh, um, it's really you know the way and there, there's many ways of, of being able to 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 make a, a difference um, um, and I think I think that's really the key is that um, uh, collectively we have different different um, different um, uh, uh, modalities that, that we can use to uh, to offer uh, healing and uh, solace uh, to people and um, uh, I think uh, when 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 it uh, really uh, boils down to it, uh, it's always resonates back again to these three core uh, principles of uh, love, empathy, and uh, and the human connection. Uh, so just a little bit about myself, as you you, you introduced, I've been in in the field uh, well uh, for like uh, officially for a bit more than than twenty years, but uh, it's always felt it, it always felt like. Uh, like kind of a calling to do this kind of uh, work and so it's more like a vocation more than an actual job in itself in, in itself um and uh I've, I've worked in different countries i have a multicultural background myself and um uh i i, I travel quite quite a lot so i find, find myself walking in different uh, different parts of of the world so people often ask me you know so where where am i from and uh that's always kind of a, a big question because uh, I'm, I'm moving so much. But uh, so I, I like to use the term like a traveling uh, psychologist or a <laughs> traveling uh, healer, <laughs> uh, open to different uh, modalities. I, I believe that there's, you know, there isn't totally, I, I believe that there's so many different um, uh, ways to, uh, uh, to, to be able to, um, to help, help people. Um, but yes, definitely, I think there's so much, much improvement that can be made in the field of, of psychiatry. Um, and there's uh, so, so much yet to, to, to learn uh, as well. And, and, and uh, uh, so, so that, uh, that's, that's one thing. Another thing that I've been doing over the years is, is found an NGO uh, for, um, to raise awareness on the topic of eating disorders. 
uh, in the Middle East. And um, that's something that has been growing steadily since 2009. And it's uh, just sharing, um, uh, sharing uh, and raising awareness to not only uh, uh, parents, but to sufferers as well, and to professionals as well in, in the Middle East. Um, uh, we're, we're based in Lebanon, but there's also in the UAE, and it's volunteers giving of, of our time uh, to help assist, uh, you know, this group of, uh, of people um, who are struggling with um, uh, anorexia, bulimia, binge eating disorders, which actually were all affects us all, and um, uh, it, it affects um, people from different backgrounds. Um, and it doesn't uh, discriminate. So, so it's this is something that is also um, uh, close to my uh, to, to my heart as as a, as a calling for various uh, reasons. Um, and um, again, uh, uh, let's say the treatment uh, approach that uh, that I that I follow is that of a very integrative one. Integrative meaning that it uh, compiles various modalities. Uh, that uh, that that is key. There are key uh, to to being able to, uh, to 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 get a difference. Some people respond well to some modalities, others not. So it's really important to come together and work in a more personalized, individualized uh, fashion um, with uh, with people. Um, I think uh, just something I'd like to say about empathy specifically, this is really the ability to understand other people. And it doesn't necessarily mean that when we are a healthcare provider that uh, we may have empathy, we may think we may have empathy, but uh, sometimes that's not, uh, that's not the case. Um, so, so it's, it's important that, uh, you know, uh, it's not only important to understand other people, but it's also being able to personalize what we're doing and to be able to give a, a sufficient amount of time and focus. Um, many healthcare professionals will see many people in the day, too many people in a day that they won't really recall who it was that they saw in, in that day, you know, because, um, uh, you know, it's, it's not necessarily personalized enough. Maybe they're not taking enough time. Maybe it's, you know, their sense of value uh, that, that isn't set in the right place. So I think that that's really important that uh, even if it doesn't necessarily mean that um, you're in a healthcare professional that you automatically are in, um, you 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 are you are acting on the empathy potential that you have, if that makes sense. Okay, so so I think it's really being able to take one person at a time. For example, I'm going to be working in my retreats uh, programs. I'm going to be seeing one person at a time. I don't do group work. That's just by choice. Uh, I I see one person at a time because I'm able to give mo all of my time to that one person to create a, a an improved change in, in assisting that person. Uh, uh, as opposed to seeing, you know, 30 people a day, you know, like, uh, or, or eight people a day and, and so on. So, uh, so, so, so that's, good. that's, that's important. That's what I wanted to, to, to share. So, so they're not without, uh, you know, taking too much more of your time. So thanks. Thanks. Thanks a lot, uh, Roger, for uh, inviting me here Thank today. And, uh, nice to be connected uh, with you all. Thank you. Okay. So, if there's one thing that like one program in the world that really excites me as a person is Saga Performance from Sweden, we have Sato with us. And why it's exciting is because I was a professional for 17 years, reached the point where I was a leader of my organization. And then I collapsed, burnouts, depressions, etc. And that was actually the start. And I think um, now in retrospect, we never learn anything about how to manage ourselves until we collapse. So we, most of us don't even know. Uh, now, Saga performance is, is really fascinating. It's very science-based, analytics-based. And uh, I'm gonna invite uh, Satu to speak about it because she's the one who can excite us more, but it's a really fascinating program. And we are also in discussions with, uh, uh, with Satu to see how we can also enable more people, especially top performers, because this is a program really for kind of CEO, even, you know, people who have big responsibilities, including celebrities, maybe politicians, whatever, but the outcome of it is amazing. So Sato, please. Thank you, Roger. And um, it's such a pleasure to be here and hear everyone's stories. And um, also nice to get new faces. I love to connect with an international crowd like this. Um, so yeah, I'm based in Sweden. I'm originally from Finland, 
Um, so I'm from the Nordic countries, from the cold, um, which also is, is one mental health issue, by the way, the darkness that we have here. Um, but I feel that people get used to it uh, if they're born here. Um, I, I'm also connected with the UAE. I used to live there until 2016. I still have business over there. Uh, first time I moved to Abu Dhabi was 2004. And ever since I've been more or less uh, connected with both Abu Dhabi, Dubai and the other Emirates and, and uh, lived there three times in total. So I've seen also the region grow. Um, and then me and Roger got in touch and um, started talking and I found this initiative uh, really amazing and, and uh, just uh, curious to hear more from everyone. Saga Performance um, operates from Sweden, but globally. So I work with both corporates and I work with high performers in everywhere in the world. Now, a high performer, uh, why is one of the questions. Um, I think high performance, as Roger was mentioning, is, is often leading to something that is not that healthy. And um, that's why Saga Performance was actually founded to work in a preventative way, but even more importantly, sort of redesign the concept of what high performance is. Because I do think that a lot of people, but also a lot of organizations have a, well, a false uh, imagine <laughs> or a picture of high performance, that it's just about doing, 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 doing more, and then ending up crashing because you just can't cope physically or mentally. And by teaching corporates, but also leaders as, and private clients as individuals, about what the concept of high performance is in a healthy way, that already is a change that I'm determined to, to do and help others to do. But then the programs that we have, um, as Roger was saying, uh, are a lot connected to data and science. What can we really rely on? We're not just collecting subjective feedback from people how they're feeling. We're actually looking under the hood and wanting to understand what you as an individual can do to optimize your wellness, your well being, your life, your performance, whether it is a corporate performance or athletic performance or just performance in life, being feeling good about yourself, getting the best out of yourself. And that could be, from my perspective, it is you have to have a systemic approach. There are so many pieces of the puzzle that have to click so that you can feel at your best. And what we look into are aspects like sleep, stress. How do you optimize that? Um, what kind of mindset do you need to have actually to win every day? Um, how do you eat? What kind of food suits you? Not just to go with the gener generic diets that are trending, go for the ketogenic diet, because that might be not your thing at all. Not the thing that you like, but also not serving your genetics. So mentioning genetics now, that's also part of the tools that we use, the testing that we use when working with individuals, that we can get your genetic blueprint and start optimizing all these areas for you by digging deeper into, okay, what is your lifestyle's current effect on your genes? So this is a, the science of epigenetics, understanding what your choices that you make on everyday basis, how they affect your genetic blueprint, not the other way around. So also going um, to change the mindset of people that I'm doomed because in my uh, family, we have this and this disease. That should not be the case. Everyone has the option to, at least to a certain point, up to a certain point to adjust and to impact their genes and their lives in a healthy way. So at the end, it is a lot about education, about the willingness to dig deeper and truly understand who you are. Sometimes it is about looking into your genetics. Sometimes it's just about adjusting your routines, your everyday life, um, your sleep routines, tracking your sleep, understanding more about your sleep quality, quantity. Sometimes it is about self-leadership. So you see, it is a big picture. It is a big puzzle. But my work and Saga Performance is there to help the individuals to understand what matters for them so that they can be 
at their best at all times. That's short about us. Thank you. Thank you, Sata, for joining us. Um, I think with, with what we're trying to do with the Heartfulness Initiative, it's something kind of along the same way, because it is based on self-assessment, assessing yourself across the seven dimensions of wellness, and then going into a plan which is measurable over time. So it's not that, oh, I need this, but then what happens next? So there's constant self-assessments that happen, that will happen, let's say every 30 days, and the person is assessing themselves. So it's like, so you, you're kind of identifying your gaps and you are setting the priorities of change and then you are tracking um, the results. So it's literally like analytics based in a sense. So today actually we launched our website and we put the questionnaire there, whoever likes to do it. It's really fascinating because like just by asking ourselves these questions sometimes is enough to find half of the solutions. If we really look at ourselves as multidimensional and then we really say, where are the gaps? And then I say, I want to focus my effort on this and this and this and this. This is how transformation happens. I think, you know, once we can measure, we can always know what, what kind of happened in the process. And this is the beauty about uh, Saga Performance, very measurable, very science-based um, genetics and epigenetics. I mean, it's fascinating. Thank you so much, Satu. Thank you, Roger. So I'm going to invite now another member of the Global uh, Mental Health Peer Network, Manvi. Manvi is one of the, I think, youngest advocates in Global uh, Mental Health Peer Network, but she's also super active and uh, ambitious and uh, bubbly. And I'd like to have her join us to also tell us how important the lived experience narrative has been for her and how she's making change in her country. So anyway, I'll leave it up to her. Go at it, Manvi. Thank you, Roger. Thank you for the opportunity. And it was great news today to hear about your daughter. So um, beginning with uh, what I'm doing right now for my community. So basically, my efforts to improve mental health in my community are a combination of storytelling, advocacy, and contribution to a lot of initiatives and projects. You know, it all started with that one fine day when I decided that I do not want to anymore hide the fact that I live with a mental illness. And I told the story without, you know, attaching any labels or any shame to it. And from that today, we are working on so many complicated and great intersections, you know, mental health, perinatal mental health, postnatal mental health, uh, human rights and mental health, uh, the LGBTQ community and mental health, and so many intersections that I personally care about a lot. So I think that is something, and especially storytelling, of course, because I think that is very powerful. You know, it gives uh, people a shared understanding and belongingness. So that is something that I'm doing for my community and I aspire to do more in the future. Uh, why I think that the lived experience narrative is important to create a more humane mental health industry is because I do not see lived experience as merely a way to, uh, you know, I do not see lived experience as merely, you know, somebody who has just lived through a mental illness. It is a very, it is a broader area which involves oppression, marginalization, stigma, human rights, chaining practices, and so many other things, so many other complicated intersections, which I think that, you know, if somebody has, uh, put in years of studying and years of case studies and everything, they indeed become an expert. They indeed are important to the field of mental health. But I think only a person who has lived through the pain of it and faced the challenges thereon can truly address the core of these issues. So I think only a person who has, uh, you know, been through all of those challenges can truly be able to address these issues. And I when I say this, a lot of people misinterpret it and think that, uh, you know, psychologists, psychiatrists, people who've put in years of hard work into studying mental health are not important. No, I do not believe in that. What I believe is that they're as important as people with lived experience should be. So I stand for what, you know, I support what the Global Mental Health Peer Network stands for and what Reconnect stands for, which is lived experience leadership. So yeah, I think thank you for giving me this platform and that's pretty much it. Thank you, Manvi. Great, so we're doing a seven dimensional program 
And what we are saying, or what we are claiming, is that through this program, you are going to be at the best human condition possible through a process that is not just about attending a session here or going to a therapist there, but to actually look at the human holistically and to put them into customized programs. Now, our focus mostly is going to be on youth, uh, social entrepreneurs, under 30s, even artists, musicians. So we have six programs actually under the Heartfulness Initiative. And each one is dedicated to a different kind of type of, um, let's say, audience. So we're doing one for parenting, one for uh, wellness and uh, youth culture, etc. So six programs. And however, we are also supporting that with something super powerful with uh, Miss Lina Hariri, who will join us from uh, HR, Ask HR. So she's the founder of Ask HR. She's based in Germany operates between Germany and Dubai and does a lot of amazing work. And what, how she's going to be supporting that program is actually based for each program, she is already in the process of identifying organizations, NGOs, hospitals, clinics, whatever it is, even um, uh, venues for art, for concert halls, galleries, etc. So that when people are going through this program, a core component of the program, is that they are going to be supported on a human resources level, as in how to present themselves, their CVs, their LinkedIn pages, and their career search. We don't, we don't want to call it job search because on the contrary, we are enabling people to pursue careers, but in that process, they might want to be in conventional jobs. The choice is theirs. Some people want to be CEOs for Apple, so nothing's going to stop them. And however, that's what we were going to help them with through Ask HR and Lina. So Lina, can you please tell us about Ask HR and yourself? Yes. So yeah, um, I founded Ask HR in 2018 after I had lost my job in Dubai. After just being in Dubai for six months, it was my second time in Dubai. Um, and I found it very, very difficult to find um, a job um, back in Dubai in human resources. I, were, I was a global HR manager um, and I found it really hard. Um, so I thought, you know, what can I do? So I just founded Ask HR myself, my own company. Um, you know, I started out uh, just doing project type work, um, you know, introducing HR into companies that didn't have any HR. Um, for me, HR represents the people, not just the company. For me, people are the driving force behind a company's success. Um, not only that, but you know, it, they work hand in hand with a business strategy, HR strategy needs to reflect that. Um, but also it's the, the well-being of the people being in the right job, in the right career. And I and I many times I've seen a people being in the wrong type of environment in the wrong type of uh, career because maybe they were pushed into it or they didn't have a choice or, you know, there are many reasons why people go into different areas. Um, I was for a long time in, 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 a, in, a, in a job that, yes, it was fine and, you know, I had a good career, uh, but it didn't satisfy me. What I do now is so much more to gear towards helping people identify um, where do they want to go, who they are. Um, and a lot of the times people don't understand, don't know what they're capable of. What do they actually want to achieve in their life? Is it, is it because they want to achieve it for themselves? Is it because um, they have pressure from, from the family? I was always told you have to be the best at everything and you have to strive for the best. And, that put a lot of pressure on me. And, and a lot of times, um, you know, uh, people are in that situation where they're being, you know, uh, pressurized uh, and in, in a pressurized environment. Um, I support them in that journey. Um, when they've lost their job, um, I go through, yes, their CV and just really identify, right, okay, what is it that makes you happy? What is it that you 
want to achieve? What are your skills? What are your goals? Um, and I map that. It's like a journey. Um, and a lot of times people just don't understand what they're capable of. Um, so we map the journey from start to finish. I handhold them throughout, throughout the whole process, uh, rewrite their CV, write it in such a way that reflects them and their skills and where they want to be. LinkedIn profiles, exactly the same thing. Dubai, it's very important to have a really good, effective uh, LinkedIn profile. Uh, we work on it. What does it, you know, does it reflect you as a person? Um, what do you want to show as a person? Uh, so we do that. So I'm not just your average CV writer, LinkedIn writer. Um, I do, I go a lot deeper. I, I need to understand the person before I write a CV. Um, it, because it's a personal thing. You, you can't just write it. it. You need to understand who that person is to be able to write a CV and a LinkedIn uh, profile. Um, and that is what I believe in. Um, very, very strongly. And this is when Roger and I, we met online through a networking group and I loved where, what he was doing. I loved his, you know, I, I, I found him amazing how he was, you know, in his life and where he came from and what he's gone through. And I wanted to support that because I believe people um, need to be supported who don't have the support. Um, so for me, this initiative is is close to my heart, and uh, you know I've gone through many many things in my life, uh, coming from diverse backgrounds: German, Syrian, Muslim, Christian, being thrown into that wild environment. Um, so, and a lot of times people just don't realize how difficult it is to grow up in different environments and living in in a different environment. So, for me, this initiative is. Uh, is definitely amazing. So I want to support it wherever I can. So thank you for including me, Roger. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Lina. Um, is Coach Mesa with us? Because I'm looking for her in the participants list, but she doesn't look like she's here. So, okay. So um, Ritu, Ritu Chaturvedi, she's, we call her the queen of happiness. So she supports Reconnect a lot. She's truly amazing. And she's an art therapist and color healer in a uh, mental health center. And she's already bringing a lot of healing into through art and color. So I'd like to welcome Ritu to tell us a bit about art and color as form of healing, because we know it works. Okay, let me see, is Ritu with us? Okay, so Ritu is not with us. Great, so I have one more wonderful person before I move to two wonderful ladies. Well, one of them is showing up with us, Soul Hope from Dubai. But before that, I will from our guest panel from abroad, I have Anto from the Global Mental Health Peer Network. Now, me and Anto, both of us, we're based very far from each other but we're both uh, coordinators of the Human Rights uh, Committee of the Global Mental Health Peer Network. It's a new committee. We haven't done anything yet. We're actually having our first uh, meeting very soon or, oh, did I miss it? Okay, so, <laughs> well, anyway, um, so um, I believe that the basis and with what I experienced was, was very legal, very, systematic in, in, in my country. And I don't want to talk about it because this is not the right occasion. However, the basis of any me successful mental health system is patient protection laws. And patient protection laws are need to be centered around the human. Uh, I think Richard touched upon it. It's featured in his film. We are talking about it, that inhumanity in dealing with people who are facing mental challenges like tying up and like kidnapping and like forced medication and all of this. It's just, it's just making the situation worse. So I want to host Anto to tell us about his experience and what his, what his ideas are for, uh, for uh, human rights. Thank you, Roger, everyone. So thank you for the chance to be invited in this uh, wonderful 
platform which is reconnect and uh, i joined also global mental health peer network so this 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 forum is great roger congratulations for connecting us so you've been connected with all of this uh, beautiful expert and within diversity so it's it's embodied the the what lived experience to be a connection so regarding to the human rights uh, violation in mental health i experienced uh, 20 years ago when i was like in my 20s i had this mental health breakdown and i was misdiagnosed and i was chained into uh chain literally chained on the bed on the primary health care which is it was the government facilities so at that time i was feeling broken down and cannot see my future is what what will be and here i am now i become a mental health activist advocating for the human rights issues everywhere i started from in 2010 when i joined an art exhibition which is i use art to to campaign so yes we should we should i would love to hear about the art therapy from our previous uh, explained uh, guest but anyway so from that part, which is, I know that mental health systems, if it's not adequate and uh, there is not, uh, uh, mental health is not an issue in, in one country, so it will neglect everything. I mean, I mean the human rights will be violated uh, automatically because even now, even when I'm speaking, people uh, are still chained because of the mental health condition. People are experiencing the human rights violation. So, what I what I find out now that person live with with lived experience should be recognized, should be engaged in a meaningful way, so that we could have our voice out. So, and we have our uh, recognitions to able to speak what what is the best for us, and and if we all want to get to be in recovery, it will need uh, a lot of. Uh, elements it's so it's not just like spirituality it will be uh, the connection of everything a, a holistic one so so we are i'm hoping that we all in this global world will be connected through to to an action one action to for mental health so that uh, the government the stakeholders and all of us will be in one platform in one idea in one voice so that uh, I think what we need is the connection. This is a great opportunity. So that's why this event, this this platform, Reconnect and Global Mental Health Peer Network has uh, empowered me in so many ways, uh, especially the Global Mental Health Peer Network. So that finally I can uh, put out my voice to to the global, to to the world, to the world. Then, then actually I already start uh, my global campaign in 2018 when I released my movie documentary so so i uh, tell my story to the world but but joining the global mental health network has given me uh, opportunity to speak more so so and this reconnect uh, i'm hoping so much so that you all can do more in preserving human rights of people live with experience thank you roger so i give it back to you thank you I, I changed, transformed. Okay, okay. so we have uh, amazing innovation also happening in the UAE. Unfortunately, Ritu and Coach Mesa couldn't join, not sure why. However, uh, here tonight, um, and we're gonna take you on another tour because many faces showed up, but this here, uh, people who are present with us here in Dubai tonight, are all innovating and creating amazing solutions that are localized to the UAE and to the Middle East. Uh, in my opinion, like also every mental health system would fail if it doesn't have peer support. And the best peer support we have here as a community that's been active, just doing things from their heart and soul, just to support the community are these two lovely ladies here known as soul hope who's soul and who's hope <laughs> <laughs> we both are together soul so hope. Bumika and sonan and they will tell you about what they are doing here for support for people who are experiencing mental health conditions 
thank you thank you roger for making us part of this beautiful family and uh, we'll be quick because we know that short of time <laughs> super you. quick so what is soul hope uh, soul hope is all about giving hope to people what we do we go out and meet unknown people over a cup of coffee and become their went and listener so we formed this soul hope community 3 years before over the vision of to be with people to be that helping hand to be that listener uh, where we can say you are not alone we are together in this journey so we all have unique experience in our life you know my 30 years of experience is different from my partner experience and you all have survival kit we just share that survival kit with each other and um, as it is so easy to went out to stranger because there is no fear of judgment so we play that stranger role in someone's life to hold their hand in their journey to help them to be the best version of themselves to share that survival kit that you are not alone we are there to listen we are there to show you the bright side of life we are there to show you the hope hope that there is a light at the end of the tunnel that uh, you know we we can be in this journey together so that's all about soul hope we form this community we do soul uh, soul hope meetups where we invite uh, unknown people you know under one roof we share the life perspective it's it's not networking it's all about connecting the like minded people where uh, we can be there for each other so my partner you want to say something <laughs> we'll be soon uh, starting soul hope cafe where uh, it's only love where we can show people that uh, you know love exists god exists in people in humans when we transform our vision to see people you know as god there will be so much so much love we just have to you know clear our specks there is lot of you know hatred ego we we just clear people's specks that uh, this is a perspective to see life up to you rather than sitting at hope and cribbing about it take charge of your thoughts take charge of the behavior and just stand up you know just that one step you take it 99 step the universe the divine the soul hope peeps will take it for you so that one step you have to take it so that's all about soul hope thank you so much you guys are so wonderful i'm in hr so i use ask hr uh, but uh, i use askhr.com so i work on well being of people well being of leader so i take uh, employee experience as a measure of well being so meeting people from different walks of life is so amazing everyone everyone is so unique bring so much love to the table it is up to us whether we have to take the best part of people or the worst part of people so that's all about vision soul hope thank you so much thank, thank you, so much. Thank you. <laughs> part of it yeah <laughs> okay so we're not going to keep you very long anymore we're actually done with the panel but i just really wanted to kind of thank this program what reconnect does since it start is to present the solutions of others that are available in uh the you know in the world or in the local kind of um uh, uh geography that we are in so literally this program is all about presenting the solutions that everyone here or on the session are offering so i want to thank um kind of go through the thanks so first first global mental health peer network thank you so much for all the support what we are working with um global mental health peer network is not just advocacy and creating change but there is a course for advocacy and i think it's the easiest thing for anyone to say they're a mental health advocate and just keep distributing it's okay not to be okay and i think there's a lot of misleading information that goes along and i i know it's out of good intentions but i think people who want to go into advocacy need to be talking about the right things and there are tools and strategies so we're all looking forward to seeing this course coming to life because we are make, making it accessible for anyone who wants to advocate for mental health here in the uae or wherever we will go um global change makers um uh, i love this program because i believe in its power of transformation in some places it's not as needed but like you know i remember growing up in a war country and after the war we have you know electricity cuts i mean it never got any better but like when we were growing up 
like the first thing that we would do when the electricity would go is like we would cuss the government. Now, with global change makers, instead of cussing the government, you start working on creating the solution. And I think this is what our youth need, especially in places where there's not enough access um, to, uh, to jobs. And I think we're all heading into a jobless world. So we might as well equip the youth with uh, social entrepreneurship and design thinking. Um, Melody House is our partner here in Dubai. We're also going to have a space with them and it, they are our partner on the culture program. So anyone who wants to, with the Heartfulness Initiative, anybody who wants to work in the field of art, music, entertainment, dance, then we are putting them in a group program supported by um, mentorship programs, design thinking, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Evoke. Evoke, I think, is Abby here is with us. Abby, founder she started evoke just a few weeks ago and this is the culmination of amazing knowledge of psychology wellness coaching storytelling and just amazing community building evoke is going to be accessible for anybody who wants it it is amazing series of podcasts that launched just a couple of months back and every monday one comes out and it's honestly helping everyone who's being um, touched by it. And uh, Abby is also with Evoke, building a community and spreading so much awareness. So thank you, Abby, for being here and for partnering with us. Goy, where we are here today, uh, has been also super supportive um, with us and we are going to be offering the program from this place as well. And all of this is gonna kind of come one step at a time. Tomorrow, we're, it's, uh, today is the announcement phase launch. Actually, next week, same day, like today, next Monday, we're launching our first space with Redis and Red with a focus on youth um, and students and young entrepreneurs. Um, we have with us also Art Bazaar. Unfortunately, Sarah couldn't join us, but Art Bazaar are also supporting local artists with selling art, with development, with art therapy, with different forms of initiatives. Redis and Red, uh, which is based in Silicon Oasis, has been phenomenal in giving us a space. And they said, so we said, what do you do with this space? He said, oh, it's just a hangout space. And he said, we're gonna turn it into a performance space. And this is what we are going to do. We are going to uh, be having the different programs that we've discussed tonight offered there. Um, we are also uh, partnering up with DPA Investments and they're here with us as well. Where, 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 where? Oh, gone? Okay. So anyway, they're here with us and they've been super supportive in our launch plan, but they've also launched this virtual reality and we are going to explore what we could do with reconnect and virtual reality. So let's see where that's going to go, but it looks really exciting. Voss Water, thank you so much for supporting us from day one. Alive um, is here. Alive, young people who want to create change and awareness and mental health. And they are supporting us on ground. They've developed our website. They've been super amazing in supporting our journey. Yogi truck is a fantastic, it's very simple concept, a truck that goes and does like yoga wherever. So we've partnered up with them so we can actually take the heartfulness initiative to where people need it rather than waiting for people to come to us. So we want to take it to schools, beaches, universities, whatever, we're doing our first retreat in a few weeks together. So we're combining the program of Heartfulness Initiative with yoga and meditation and other practices. Uh, Ask HR, thank you. Soul Hope, thank you so much. The Exotic also are supporting us with digital and web. Ether is a sound healing and like different, like uh, let's say movement and uh, sound-based uh, therapies. Shin Shin Talu, Yara, where is Yara? She was here. Hi, Yara. Sorry? El Yarite? Okay, but hello, I mean, Yara is like me. She's got like three different names. So now she's El Yarite, she dances, but she also organizes an amazing festival called Shin Shin Talu, and it's a conscious festival. It's not about going and, you know, getting knocked up, knocked out, but knocked up wellness she does amazing she's uh, Shin Shintalo is also a talent agency she works with amazing artists and tonight after with the session she's gonna do a really awesome dance because movement is her therapy she's also had her experience with mental health and she explores her full potential through dance and being involved in the cultural scene 
Um, and yeah, I guess. And last but not least, we have Emily here with us, who's been also super kind. She gave everybody who's here in Dubai a really beautiful gift crystals. And she's also um, very, very knowledgeable of psychology and different uh, forms of therapies. So she's someone we met in the last few days and she's been amazing to be with, it, with us here tonight. So I want to thank really everybody for being here. You're gonna hear a lot from us in the next uh, few days. I mean, especially the programs that we are partnering up with because I mean, in seven days, six days, actually now we're launching the first space. So we need material from you. We need visuals, we need videos, we need, we need, we need. So please bear with us in the next few weeks so we can roll out. And we are sure that with what we're doing and with the approach that we're taking with this project, we are taking it to where people are rather than like actually being limited to a physical space. We, we do have spaces, but from these spaces, we're going to other spaces. We're going to the corporate world, we're going to gyms, we're going to fitness clubs, we're going to organizations, NGOs, whatever it is, whoever would believe in uh, the holistic approach to mental health and wellness. And I believe we already have a couple of people who are interested and soon, I mean, now we're launching in a few weeks, we'll start heading into organizations and offering those transformational programs and also for individuals. So I want to thank you all for making this happen and for being the change that we all want to see in this world. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations and thank you, Roger. Really and happy Roger. Valentine's. <laughs> well done. <laughs> thank you so much. Very good, looking forward to it. It was really nice meeting everybody as well. Feel free to contact us as well. Um, yeah, and Roger, I've got nothing but good things to say. You've been very inspiring and um, you've been very passionate and just as an FY, um, a lot of our members have mentioned to me personally that they can just see the passion runs right through you and you're so clear in what you want and we're very humbled to have you as part of our team. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Oh.